Welcome to the W3 Schools CSS font tutorial. CSS font properties define the font family, boldness, size and style of a text. In CSS there are two types of font family names. Generic families, which is a group of font families with a similar look. These are serif, sans serif and monospace and font family names which are specific font families like Times New Roman or Arial or Courier New. Let's look at how they're grouped. Times New Roman and Georgia are part of the serif family. Arial and Verdana are part of the sans serif family. Serif fonts have small lines at the end of some characters. You see here they are marked in red. Sans serif fonts they do not have the lines at the end of the characters. Actually sans means without. Monospace fonts like Courier New and Lucida Consoles are fonts where all characters have the same width. You can see the difference especially for the R and I here in Courier New and R and I in Arial. On computer screens sans serif fonts are considered easier to read than serif fonts. When uh, we speak of fonts it's most often the font family we mean and this is set with the font family property. When setting the font family property you should set several font names as a fallback system. If the browser doesn't support the first font, it tries the next. You can specify several fonts using a comma. Start with the font you want and end with a generic family name. So the browser can pick a similar font in the generic family if no other fonts are available. If the name of the font is more than one word, it must be in quotation marks, like this. Let's change this font to Verdana. Let's see what happens if we deliberately misspell the name of the font. See, it goes to the next fallback font, which is the generic sans serif. On our tutorial page, we have a link to a page listing web safe font combinations. But let's move on to font style. The font style property is mostly used to specify italic text. The font style property supports three values normal, which is how the text is shown normally, italic, which is italic style, and oblique which is leaning text. This is quite similar to italic but less supported in browsers. So let's remove the oblique font style. Now the paragraph is shown in the default style which is normal. The font size property sets the size of the text. The font size value can be an absolute or relative value. With absolute value, you set the text to the specified size, and you do not allow users to change the text size in their browsers. Absolute size is useful when the physical size of the output is known, like when you know exactly how many pixels of width you have available. With relative size, you set the size relative to the surrounding elements and you allow users to change the text size in their browsers. Let's look at an example where we set absolute size. Here we have set the size in pixels. This gives us full control of the text size, but it does not allow users to resize the text in their browsers. However, you can still use the zoom tool 
to resize the entire page like this. To allow users to resize the text, many developers use EM instead of pixels. The EM size unit is recommended by the World Wide Web Consortium. 1 EM is equal to the current font size. The default text size in browsers is 16 pixels. So the default size of 1 EM is 16 pixels. So we want this H1 element to have a size of 40 pixels, but we want to set it with EM. So in our comment here, we've shown how to calculate from pixels to EM. You divide the pixels by 16. So in this example, the text size is the same as the previous example. However, with the EM size, it's possible to adjust the text size in all browsers. I'll show you this in a different browser. You see we're not zooming, we're changing the text size from medium, which is default, to largest or to smaller size. Unfortunately, there is still a problem with older versions of Internet Explorer. The text becomes larger than it should when made larger and smaller than it should when made smaller. The solution to this is to set a default font size for the body element. So we set the font size to 100% for the body element. Now with this code, the text is the same size in all major browsers and it allows users to resize the text or zoom the page. Let's see how we can set the boldness of the text. In this example, we use the font weight property to set the boldness of the text. You can set it to normal, bold, or bolder, lighter, or a number from 100 to 900, where 400 is the same as normal, and 700 is the same as bold. The difference between the weight settings for this depends on the font you use. On the w 3 school tutorial page there are more examples and we list all the CSS font properties. And there's a link for each property that goes to our CSS reference where you can find more information for any CSS property. This concludes our tutorial for CSS font. Thank you for watching.